George Wood. I'm with Tyler Camera Systems. We're here showing the new Tyler Mini Gyro. It's a small portable mount. It has two Kenyon K8 gyros inside using a suspension post to get rid of vibrations. It is not rigidly mounted. You can pick it up, you place it on whatever surface you want, and at that point you just need to manage the camera package. A light, easy hold to it. No death grip. Package is like to 30 pounds, but it's not so much the weight, it's the size of the package. We want to keep the packages concise, something that's easy to manage. We don't want to see a 435 with a 25 to 290. It's just too big for the mount. You have to draw the line somewhere. And that's it. It's a very simple, easy mount to use, uh, multiple, multiple uses. On helicopters, uh, there's a slipstream coming down the side of the helicopter, so you will sit in the rear door normally of a helicopter with the door off. The mount at that point, you want to keep the beginning of the lens inside the doorway. It will sit on the seat for most helicopters. You'll either straddle it or you'll sit alongside of it, and then again, just let the helicopter do the work. You want to dolly the helicopter, not the mount. You want the big move out of the helicopter. Keep it out of the slipstream, keep the lens small enough that you're not protruding into that slipstream or you will get a wind chatter to it and as soon as you start feeling that you need to come back up inside again. The post itself, the vibration post on its inside is a progressive rate spring that is jumping up and down even though you don't see it when you're working. It's taking that vibration from the helicopter. All helicopters work in a 7 to 14 hertz range on every rotor beat. So it's moving somewhere between 8 to 3 16ths of an inch. Depends how good the helicopter is. And on every rotor beat, since it's jumping, that spring underneath has to compensate for that and negate any kind of motion out of the helicopter, which it does do. The boat is uh, not that hard to do. Um, we again ask you to watch the water conditions they're at. If you're going to stay on the post, you may not want to be up on the bow of the unit uh, when you're going. As the boat hits the wave, it tries to pump forward, and since the mount's on the post, it will try to rock over the top of the post. At that point, something maybe like a Yarrow rig or suspending the mount in the air and kind of let it free float, then you have better success if you have to be on the bow. If you can reposition for your shot and move towards the transom or mid portion of the boat that's already seen the energy dissipated, then you can sit up on the rail and work there and not have a big deal. The boat only has harmonics normally from the engine and a light fetch chop at best uh, on a flat of water. That won't bother the mount at all. You just need to watch the boat pumping off on the bow if you're up in the bow section. Minivan, that's pretty straightforward. Again, you want to stay out of, if you're doing any kind of speed with it, again, try to keep it out of the wind blast, but most of those shots we see are in the 10, 15 mile an hour range or with bikers or, or runners or something like that. Just be comfortable, sit in the side door. Uh, you can prop it up on a set of Apple boxes if you'd like. Uh, again, keep the package manageable for yourself and just kind of relax and let them not do the work. Runs on a 24 to 30 volt range, uh, so like an Anton Bauer block style battery, 3 pin XLR. Uh, plug in and you can run off of it. We have dunk car batteries in places where you don't have the ability to send a battery in. You can do that. We are polarity corrected inside the unit, so you do not have to worry about polarity correction. Just plug in and use it. Pulse 2 amp hour, so it depends on your power source. If you have a 12 amp hour battery and it's in good shape, you'll get five plus hours on that battery. Uh, if it's a little weak, you may get three, something like that. 